Hello. You may have heard a rumor that Hero Player is free with Nuke and Nukex, and that's true. So if you buy a license for either of those, you get Hero Player for nothing. Today I'm going to show you how to use Hero Player to speed up your review process. Here's a quick playback comparison between Nukes Viewer and Hero Player. As you can see, this really speeds up your review process, being able to play back in real time this way. Hero Player is a fantastic review tool. It's got lots of great features and it can play back in real time, which is something really useful if you're a Nuke artist. If you tried to play back in Nuke Viewer, as we do here, you'll see that it takes time to refresh. Now this is because Nuke's Viewer is not designed for real-time playback. It's designed to show you just a couple of frames here and there as you work. And playback there, as you can see, is quite slow. Now that's not to say that Nuke's Viewer won't play back in real-time if you allow it to cache, but it is limited by the amount of RAM on your machine, so it's something to be aware of. So what we're going to do is use a flipbook. A flipbook creates temporary display files that play back in real time, so you can check your work as it would appear in the final shot. Nuke includes a vanilla flipbook that has always shipped with it, and you can get to it through this little button here. So if we click the flipbook button, use the default flipbook settings, and click OK, we get our flipbook. You can see here that the robot is animating nicely. However, if you use Hero Player instead of Nuke's vanilla tool, you have a lot more power to play with. I'll show you that right now. So it's the same button, the flipbook, but select Hero Player from the dropdown instead. You can choose the viewer you want to flip, so if you had more than one, you could just select the one you wanted to view. If you had a region of interest active in the viewer and you wanted to have a look at that, you could just enable this control. These are your standard channels. If you just wanted to see RGB, for example, you could do that. Or you could view just the alpha channel on its own. The frame range is just what you want to flip. So we're just going to flip 10 frames or so. You can select whichever viewer lot you want. It's just the same ones as the viewer up here. If you select burn in the lot, the flipbook is rendered with the selected lot applied. If you uncheck it, the flipbook is rendered using the equivalent lot based on the lot name. If you're using Hero Player as your flipbook, you won't have to burn in the lot because Hero Player and Nuke use the same color environment. You can include audio if there is any, and enable Use Proxy to render the flipbook using a smaller file size. This will speed up the render, but it does reduce the quality of the image. If you're rendering a lot of frames in your flipbook, you can use the frame server in the background to free up the interface so you can continue working while the flipbook renders. If you disable continue an error, rendering stops when you can count as an error, such as missing frames, rather than finishing the flipbook without those frames. So if we click OK, this begins to render a flipbook. Instead of using Nuke's native viewer, we're going to get a Hero Player session launched. Here we are in Hero Player. Again, you can see the robot is animating nicely but we still need to add the screen in the background, which is currently a checkerboard. As you can see here, this particular clip tells you which node you rendered from and the date and timestamp, so you can tell which is the newest version of your comp. One of the advantages of Hero Player is that as well as real-time playback, you can zoom in and out of the monitor as well, so you can check the fidelity of edges and things like that. If you try to do that in Nuke, you can see it's caching here in the playback cache. But if you were to zoom in, it's going to dump that cache, as you can see, so you'd have to render that frame again. The reason it does that is because Nuke only renders those scan lines that it needs to display what's on screen right now. So if you zoom in, it's going to need more information, which means it's going to need to cache again. Hero Player doesn't have that problem. You can zoom in and out as you see fit, even during playback if you wish. Another great thing about Hero Player is, because it's in the same basic environment as Nuke, all your color settings that you set up in advance are carried over to Hero Player without modification. So if you do go back to Hero Player, in the Project menu, Edit Settings, and look in the Project Settings under Color Management, you'll see it's pulled in exactly the same color spaces that we used, so you don't need to worry about all that stuff, it's taken care of. The same would be true if we were using OCIO and ACES, something like that. It just happens that this project was set up using Nuke default settings. So this looks good to me. Let's assume that one of my collaborators has created a little backdrop 
So we'll disconnect the checkerboard and connect the new read node up here. And there it is in the viewer, very nice. So what we'll do here is click the flipbook again, use the same settings, same frame range and so on, and then click OK to create the new flipbook. Now we have two versions inside Hero Player. See the timestamp has incremented a little, so we know which one's newer. So now we can see the plate is in place and it plays back nicely. Now let's assume that my collaborator has decided that, you know, maybe they want a bit more blue in this image. So let's connect up the read node in the node graph and see the new version. Click the flip book again, same settings that will be added to Hero Player in the same session so we can compare things. Okay, so now we have three versions. We have our original with the checkerboard, we have the first iteration and the second iteration. However, with the power of Hero Player, we can actually view them side by side or with a wipe. There's two ways you can do that. You can drag them into the buffers like this, and then you'll see the switches to have a second iteration and third iteration with a wipe. If we go up to the top of the viewer and click the AB layout drop down. We can select wipe and use the wipe widget to view the older and newer versions. Admittedly, that's pretty subtle, and that's how these things go. If we wanted to make it more obvious, we could compare the checkerboard with the one that we actually want to look at, and then it becomes obvious what's happening. The other way you could do that is to drag your versions down onto the timeline here and create a sequence. Sequences give you more control over your shots than the viewer alone. You can use Hero's timeline editing tools to edit your shots. For example, trimming or slipping the contents of the shot to view the frames you want. We'll go into more details of the timeline editing tools in the second part of this tutorial. So we'll put our versions on separate tracks, and now we can assign the tracks to the buffers up here using the hotkeys 1 and 2. So we want the first one to be in buffer A, press 1, and the second one to be in buffer B, press 2. The same thing, it's all set up nicely for you with a wipe, and we can wipe that using the widget. You can also change this to horizontal side by side so you can see both at once, or vertically if you choose. And again, you can zoom in and out to see the differences. Another thing to note about Hero Player is that it has some nice workspaces for you all set up. So if we were reviewing, we could go to Workspaces, Reviewing, and that would automatically load our scopes nicely here. Hero Player scopes are identical to those in Nuke Studio and Hero. They work in exactly the same way. If we were to compare our shots again, so hit 1 on the first and 2 on the second, move our wipe a little bit, now we've got two scopes for each buffer, and it tells you which buffer you're looking at buffer A and buffer B. Same with the waveform and the histogram. You can undock these, make them bigger, smaller, do whatever you like. In this instance, we can see that the highlights at the right side of the histogram for buffer A have strayed into the warning zone, so we might have to ask our collaborator to tone down the highlights in the background monitor. Now, if I was going to collaborate with someone live, I could also use a sync review session, which connects me as the host to other people via the internet. Go to Workspaces, Sync Review to automatically load the layout. If you click Host, it'll give you some options for how to connect. We'll explore Sync Review more in the second tutorial. If you'd like to know more about what Hero Player can do for you and how to get your license for free, go to campaigns.foundry.com slash Hero Player Free with Nuke. In the next video, we'll talk about reviewing your shots in the context of the show. We'll also look at some of the timeline editing tools in Hero Player, which are the same tools in Nuke Studio and Hero. We'll also cover sync review and annotations in more detail. Thanks for watching.